Hi, so welcome to the lecture on uh, multidimensional mapping part 2. So, in the last lecture we have been discussing about how to compute for a given thread, how to compute this global thread ID, how to compute of course, how to first compute its block ID, this is position of in terms of the exact block where it is it, then the position of the thread inside this block and then use this block number and position of the thread values to compute the global thread ID over that is that is the exact position or exact index of the thread among the entire packing of threads that is there, right. So, so this was the example we have been using just to recall what we are really trying to do. We are trying here to de design a 2D matrix space and for some reason we are trying to define this 2D matrix space using a collection of threads which are arranged in three dimension with respect to the thread block and we have four blocks arranged in two dimension. Here in our example we have colored the blocks in different ways and now uh, we can understand that given these relations each thread can compute its exact position and then <coughs> so this, are, this is the relation among the variables that we have already discussed and uh, so inside your program you can have this kind of program statements which a compute string thread uh, that is a CUDA kernel uh, can figure out using this kind of program statements that what is the global ID of a thread, right. So, what is very important here is when the kernel is launched and it is executing, you have as we have discussed earlier, you have single instruction multiple thread, right, that is your model of computation. So, there is the same piece of code that is the kernel and that piece of code is getting executed by all the threads whose packing has been decided by the launch parameters, right. So, using this kind of expressions every thread can compute a unique global thread id this is the most important thing with respect to distin distinguishing the thread with respect to other threads for every thread i have a unique combination of block ids and thread ids using which it can compute a glo unique global thread id now why this is important because this is a very parallel program right so every thread needs to find out what is the unique work it is going to do? That is, what is the unique positions in the memory from which it is going to fetch operands or what is the unique positions in the memory where it is going to store operands based on whatever computation it is going to do that is specified in the code. So, for getting this unique positions in the memory or in, in terms of some position in a specific data structure, I would say for with respect to the programming parlance the thread needs a unique ID to be computed and that is basically the global thread ID. So, as we can see <coughs> if we now apply our earlier discussion of threads and blocks and as we have been discussing that we are coloring the blocks in four different colors and each block is now containing these 16 threads. Then if we map a 2D matrix into this collection of threads and blocks then this is how they would look like right. So, as you can see I have these four blocks. So, of course, this is a 2D picture, but technically as we know that since CUDA, I mean this is a programming C based programming language and the memory access pattern has to be extremely sequential. So, finally, the arrangement of these locations in the memory is all sequential. So, these locations will be indexed extremely sequentially up from 0 to 63, 64 locations you have. The first 16 locations would be consumed by block 0. That means all the threads with those IDs of the block mapping to block 0, the next 16 to block 1, block 2 and block 3, right. So, for every thread here I can compute, I, for, suppose I am trying to do some matrix operation. So, then the thread has to figure out using its combination of thread ID and block ID as well as grid dimension, block dimension variables that what is the corresponding position on which it is going to work with respect to the matrix arrangement, right. That means, it has to figure out what is the row column index combination on which uh, for which it really corresponds. We are assuming here that we have launched 64 threads, each of the threads are going to do something about a unique location 
of the matrix. So, let us say we are we are we are trying to say that the thread which is of ID 18 is going to do something about the data located at the second row and second column. Right? First of all the thread needs to map itself back to this position that yes I am the thread who is supposed to do something about the data located at the second row and second column position which would mean it has to figure out the corresponding these values right the i and j values that is the row and column values there right. So, how can it do that? So, first of all the thread would use the access the expressions we have divided or discussed earlier that how a thread can really compute its block number, how a thread can compute its thread number, it can use these expressions to deliver what is its global thread id. That means, what is its exact position among the all the correction of threads right. So, using those relations like this, this thread should be first able to compute this value 18 right that this among this global positions which are ranging from 0 to 64 I am the 18th thread. Now, yes it has to use this number and the other values that is the, uh, the, the matrix dimension values to compute okay, what is the row and column value on which I am going to work. So, that it can figure out just by dividing the global thread ID with the number of columns. So, it knows that okay, I have covered. <coughs> so, uh, if I if I if I if I just divide it by the number of columns, then definitely I would get that I, I correspond to the second row here, right? And then <coughs> again, if I do a percentile operation, that would give me that what is the column at which I am located, which is so obvious, right? Because as we can see that this percentile with 8 is giving me 0. So, I am located in this column 0, column 1, column 2 like that. right? <coughs> so, in this way I can keep on doing a percentile and can figure out what column I am corresponding to. I can divide by the total number of columns and I can find out what is the row I am corresponding to. right? So, for 18 I will be able to apply this method and I should. So, 18 divide by 8 that and, and of course, uh, we are we, we are not uh, we are not worried about the remainder so that gives me a quotient of 2 here so that i know that the row number is 2 and of course 18 percentile here with 8 that would give me a remainder of 2 so i know that the column number is also 2 so in that way the thread is able to discover which is the location in the matrix for which it is going to do something about it right now of course as we can see that since this is a 2d arrangement another relation should also hold that I have the total number of threads which is given by this expression that the dimension of the entire grid that is the x, y, z the total number of blocks multiplied by. So, this part gives me the total number of blocks of course, the dimension on the of the grid in the x, y and z directions multiplied by the total number of blocks inside the thread that is the block dimension in x, y and z directions. This gives me the total number of threads which should also be equal to that total number of rows multiplied by total number of columns. So, overall I have two different ways to find out what is the total number of threads in this case. Now, in general, so this is just an example situation. We use this kind of a 2D representation of data and a, a, a matrix a, 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 a matrix example and we use this definition of blocks and grids to figure out that okay, if I launch the threads using this kind of launch parameters, then with respect to the actual data collection which may be in 2D space, how can each thread compute what is the data location for which it is going to do some work. right? But typically how would you like to go about it? So, the CUDA programming interface is going to provide you <coughs> support for mapping kernels from any dimension. To, of, uh, to data of any dimension right you can uh, but of course <coughs> but of course you, you are limited by the thing that uh, your kernels uh, the number of blocks has to be limited to three dimension and inside the block your thread packing has also got to be limited to three dimension but inside this i can always vary 0 1 and 2 the, i mean that, that i mean i can only have the x dimension i can have x and y car, uh, two, the 2d 2d i mean i can have 2d packing of blocks with 1D packing of uh, 1D 1D packing of threads, 1D packing of blocks, 
2D packing of threads, all those combinations can come in. But how do you really want to pack the indexes depends on your choice of the problem. Suppose <coughs> you are trying to map a 3D kernel, but uh, I mean uh, you are trying to map you are trying to sorry you are trying to map a 2D data space using a 2D uh, using a 3D kernel that is a bad decision to make because then what will happen is your memory access expressions are going to be co complex right however <coughs> it makes sense that if you have a 2D data space the actual data you are talking about maybe it's a two dimensional matrix then you set your launch parameters in such a way that your kernel is fundamentally 2D. That means, you have two dimensional blocks and also two dimensional arrangement of blocks in the grid. Similarly, if your data space is 3D, it may help to design your access expressions of the memory with respect to the global thread IDs in such a way that you have a 3D kernel which is mapping nicely the 3D data. right? Okay. This is a small correction here that we have. Now, proceeding further. So, in this two dimensional kernel example, we will take another different case here that suppose we have, we have already seen that what should be a definitive guideline. If we are talking about really mapping a two dimensional space we should be using two dimensional kernel definitions. right? So, let us define a grid which is two dimensional which is the this is the dimension of the grid right? that is you are talking about in x dimension you will have the block id x changing from 0, 1 to 2 and in the y dimension you are going to have block id values uh, that is block id x dot y with values 0 to 1. And inside each block you have a 2D packing of in total 20 threads 5 times 4. Then you, this is how your blocks would be arranged. I mean again we are using a color coding to kind of represent the different blocks. So, I am going to have 6 blocks. The issue is see how things change with this dimensional coding since the grid is defined with index 3 comma 2. So, your block id is, is going to change from 0 0 up to 1 comma 2. Right? So, you have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 like this. Since you are going to spread the block id x dot x variable from 0 to the index 2, and then again you would be increasing the value in the y direction, and then again your block id x dot y would be 1, and again your block id x dot x value would range from 0 to up to 2. Right? So, in that way, you have got this arrangement of 6 blocks. Now, if you pick up e, in, in one example block, for example, this block 1, as we can see that since the block dimensions have been defined here as 5 comma 4, so it is total 20 threads, this 5 comma 4 will actually define how the threads are going to be indexed. right? So, since this is 5 comma 4, the threads would be indexed from 0, 0, 0, 1 like this up to 3 comma 4. So, here this is thread id x dot the, this is the basically the x dimension, this is the y dimension. Since this is the x dimension, so we understand the thread id x dot x variable should range from 0 to 4. And since this is the y dimension, the value is 4, so thread id x dot y is going to range from 0 to 3. right? So, overall I would have thread 0, 0, 0, thread 1, 0, 1 and the final thread with values 3 comma 4. Right? In total you have 20 threads. I hope this is clear. So, again I would just repeat. So, the x dimension comes first, then the y dimension, whereas when I am just writing them in an order, the x dimension is increasing first and then the y dimension is increasing. I mean that is how you would like to remember it here. So, now if <coughs> I am looking for a specific thread here, let us say this thread. So, again let us do a recollection of what would be the thread id and other values. So, since this is a two dimensional kernel. I am doing a two dimensional kernel mapping to a two dimensional data space. I am trying to 
recover the i and j values right that is the row and column index values here. <coughs> so, the j value is given by the block i d x dot x times block dimension dot x times plus the thread id in the x direction right. So, what are those individual values? So, as you can see the, the block id for this is basically 0 comma 1. So, <coughs> so, this is the block id x dot x value this one which is so here right. This is the block id x dot y value which is not required here the block dimension is again in the x direction it is 5. So, this is the block dimension. So, that is 5 here the block id x dot x value is 1 because of this right and what about the thread id x dot x value. So, the thread id x dot x value is 1 because here this is 1 and thread id x dot y is 0 which is not again required here. So, this is how it is right. So, using this I can compute what is the j index. So, that gives me the column index here right and similarly I can also compute the row index for you considering a two dimensional data layout here. So, coming back here the column in uh, so uh, uh, fine here if we just check it for this specific example only 151. So, if you just compute here what do you really get? So, you have for this So, since that is 6 and also let us do the same for the i value. So, as you can see the block i d x dot y now that is here we are we are talking about block 1 here. So, block i d x dot y is 0 this 0. So, and the block dimension in the y direction is this right plus the thread i d x in the y direction. So, what is the thread i d x in the y direction here? So, again you have 0 here this 0. So, that is essentially So, this would map to this i is 0 the first row and then what we computed here earlier was sorry just yeah. So, here we i was computed as 0 and this was computed as 6. So, your column index would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, that would be here right that is it yeah. Now, coming back to our example if we pick up some alternate values for example, let us pick up the some entity from block 3 here. So, block 3 has as you can see indexes. So, block 0, 1, 2 and then 3. So, the block i d x dot y is now becoming 1 small correction let us me do on the figure here. So, ideally since the block i d x is also 1 and the block i d x dot y is also 1. So, essentially we are speaking of here this figure. block 4 right. So, then inside block 4 if I speak up for a specific thread that is the first thread the thread id so I mean the thread 1. So, for thread 1 inside block 4 as you can see the thread id starts from the for the 0th thread it is thread 0 0 0 
and thread 1 is 0 1. So, the thread i d x dot x is 1, thread i d x dot y is 0 and uh, the since this is the fourth block. So, I mean among 0 at first, second, then third block is 1 0, fourth block is 1 1. So, I have the block i d x dot x and block i d x dot y both as 1 and then I have the block dimensions here right and those we have already defined earlier when the x block dimension is 5 and for block dimension dot y is 4 right. So, that is what you have. So, with this finally, I can say that okay, here what is the position I am talking about. So, j would give me here the column position and that is you, you have 1 times 5 plus 1 that is 6 and the, so, the sixth column and which row do you have is the fourth row right 1 times 4. And that is what we have right. So, row 0 1 2 3 4. So, you have the fourth row. And then so in terms of the column it is sixth, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, sixth, right. So, it should be this position here. So, as you can see you have these blocks right. So, you have you are now talking about the fifth block. So, the block i d is 1 comma 1 and inside this block you have the block dimension coming to 3 this uh, block dimension in, in for each block you have the block dimension which is 5. So, 1 times 5 plus 1, 1 times 5 plus 1. So, that is your j and if we speak about the block id here in terms of uh, the in, in terms of the rows. So, again you are moving by block dimension in the y in the y dimension when you are computing the row. So, you are in block id x dot y 1. So, that would automatically get multiplied by 4. So, then you are already you have covered the first 4 rows and then you have your thread id is the 0. So, essentially you will be in the first row of the fourth block here in, in, in here. So, that is essentially if you just compute the rows from 0, 0 at was second, third, fourth right. So, this is the position you would be talking about. Yeah. So, just ignore this arrow here. So, if we are talking about a block which is the fourth block. So, this is the 0th block, first block, second block, third block, fourth block given by 1 comma 1 and for this block I have got the thread i d x values dot for x as 1, thread i d x dot y as 0 and with this I am able to compute that this is the position we are talking about right. This is the location I am talking about. So, in this way as we can see that if you are trying to define for a 2D matrix, you are trying to use a <coughs> definition of grids and blocks in the 2D. That means, you have a 2 dimensional packing of blocks and you also have a 2 dimensional packing of the threads inside the block. So, this is a 2 dimensional packing of blocks, this is a 2 dimensional packing of grids inside the block, it nicely maps here to specific locations and, uh, 
Now, let us take an example of a three dimensional mapping of a kernel on a three dimensional data space. So, since we are trying to talk about a three dimensional mapping, but again I would just repeat one simple thing that why at all we went for this because our initial hypothesis was that a 3D mapping of a 3D kernel maps nicely to a 3D data space and a 2D kernel maps nicely to a 2D data space. So, So, uh, since uh, as we can see that our hypothesis is quite validated because now the access expressions that since for this thread which is with the block id 1 comma 1 and thread id is uh, 1 comma 0, I am able to execute these two expressions and compute the corresponding i and j values and does not the expressions look really nice and simple because for the j value which gives me the row the, the column index or uh, I have a very nice expression because block id multiplied by block block dimension plus thread id everything in the x axis right. Similarly, for the row index block id multiplied by block dimension plus the thread id again everything in the y, in, y axis right. So, this feature as you can see it is quite intuitive and it is quite easy to uh, map because since I have a 2D arrangement of threads and the threads are going to compute on a two dimensional data space that in the in, in inside the data structure definition that itself is a two dimensional arrangement. So, once I map the, the collection of threads also in two dimension the access expressions for the row and the column indices automatically map dimension wise. This is the most important thing that we are really caring about here. Since the data structure is having a specific dimensional arrangement and we are packing the threads in an identical dimensional arrangement, I have got this kind of very simple access expressions which only involve the x axis variables or only involving the y axis variables right. Now, we, we will be soon seeing that this idea maps for more, more complex data types also. For example, let us talk about a three dimensional kernel which is going to work on a 3D matrix. So, for this three dimensional kernel let us consider 8 blocks. So, your grid dimension is 2 comma 2 comma 2 arranged in 3D and you have each block containing 60 threads and they are mapped in three dimension as 5 cross 4 cross 3 uh, and so we are having these 8 blocks with their indices ordered just like we gave the earlier examples. If you pick up one block inside that again you have this collection of 60 threads with ids from all 0 to 2, 3, 5. Why? Because you have the last thread will have 2, 1 less than this, 1 less than this and 1 less than this. So, this should be 4 sorry here, this should be 4. Let me just put a correction here. So, the last index has to be 4 and so, <coughs> again when I am trying to compute for let us pick let us pick up one thread for this thread when I am trying to compute that exactly in which location in the 3D matrix does this thread correspond to I can find out the i, j and k because now it is a 3D matrix the, the positions for the location in the 3D matrix corresponding to this thread, I am saying that okay, this thread will compute something for this location in the 3D memory. Again the access expressions are all in x direction block i dx time uh, dot x times block dimension dot x plus thread i dx dot x similarly all in y dimension similarly all in z dimension right. Yeah. So, So, this is how the arrangement would look for a 3D collection here. So, you are going you are having 8 blocks now, you have 2 dimension uh, a definition of 2 in the x axis, I mean uh, you have uh, in the x in the x side you have you have blocks in 
uh, in of 2 I mean in the dimension in x size you have uh, the value ranging from 0 to 1. So, as 2 similar in the y axis and similar in the z axis. So, you have in total 8 blocks and inside each block as we defined that you have got 5 threads packed in the x dimension, 4 threads for the y dimension and 3 for the z dimension. So, as you can see you have such arrangements here in one dimension it is a collection of 5, in one dimension it is a collection of 3 and in one other dimension it is a collection of 4. So, this is how we can say that a collection of threads map to a 2D or 3D data space. In general I can have for a complex application I can have a more complex data structure considering a very high dimensional data and I can look at the dimensionality of the data and accordingly I should be able to decide a suitable dimension of my blocks, how to pack the threads inside the blocks in a multidimensional way, how to pack the blocks inside the thread again in a proper multidimensional way so that I can design simple access expressions and I can access the location inside the actual data structure and compute using the threads. We will we'll see more into that in future that how this can also create some problems with respect to parallel computation or collaboration among multiple threads. For now, let us stop here. Thank you for listening. Yes.